Hello fellow programmer. My name is Jacob and today I want to teach you a data structure called the segment tree. This is the problem that we want to solve. We are given an array of numbers and we want to perform two operations. We want to compute the minimum of a range and we want to update a value. Let's look at an example. Here's an array with eight elements and we want to compute the minimum of the range 1 to 7. Notice that the element at index 1 is included in the range and the element at index 7 is not. So here are the 6 elements in the range and the minimum is 2. Now we want to update the value at index 5 to the value 6. Currently at the index 5 is the element 2, our old minimum, and we change it to a 6. And now we want to compute another range minimum, this time of the range 3 to 8. Again, the element at index 8 is not included in the range. These are the numbers in the range and the minimum is 3 this time. What are our demands for the data structure? We want to be able to compute minima fast and we also want to update values fast. In the example before, I simply used an array. This gives us the minimum in linear time and updating values happens in constant time. Linear time is quite slow though, especially if our array is really large and we have millions of such queries. We want at least logarithmic time. This won't allow updating the values in constant time anymore, sadly. But logarithmic time will also be fast enough. And the data structure that allows to do both things is called the segment tree. Here's a little preview of a segment tree. To visualize the tree I use a table. Each node of the tree is represented as a cell of the table a big cell above two other cells is the parent node and the smaller cells are the child nodes. We take the array with eight numbers and place it at the bottom of the tree. So the array values get assigned to the tree leaves. Now we want to fill the other nodes. A node gets assigned with the minimum value of all the values of the child nodes. We start at the bottom with the last leaf nodes. The parent of 5 and 7 gets assigned with the minimum of 5 and 7, which is 5. The minimum of 3 and 2 is 2, so the parent gets assigned with 2. The minimum of 3 and 7 is 3. The minimum of 1 and 5 is 1. The minimum of 2 and 5 is 2. The minimum of 1 and 3 is 1. And the minimum of 1 and 2 is 1. Now every node of the tree has a value assigned. But what's the point of all this? Well, the value of a node tells us the minimum value of all the nodes underneath it. So it tells us the minimum value of a range in the original array. For instance, the root node has a value of 1. This tells us that the minimum of the complete array is 1. The right child node has a value of 2. This means that the minimum of the right half of the array is 2. And we can use this information to effectively perform both operations. Let's look back at the example queries. First we wanted to compute the minimum of the range 1 to 7. These are the 6 nodes. Instead of it iterating over all 6 nodes, we can also iterate over these 4 nodes. Because these 4 nodes also contain the minimum of the range. And we can easily determine the minimum value, which is 2. Next we wanted to update the value at index 5. So here is the node. We replace the value 2 with a 6, but now the parent node might have the wrong value. And in fact it has. And so does the parent of the parent, and so on. So we have to recompute the parent of 3 and 6, and replace its old value with a 3. Then we have to recompute the parent of 3 and 5, and the parent of 1 and 3. This time the value was already correct. And finally, we wanted to compute the minimum value in the range 3, 8. Instead of iterating over all 5 values, we can also look at only these two values. And immediately see that the minimum is 3. Basically, instead of iterating over the nodes in the last layer of the tree, we want to iterate over nodes in higher layers. Because the value of these nodes contain the minimum of ranges, instead of only of a single element. And as we go higher, the nodes get more and more powerful. But obviously, we can't simply take the original array to a higher layer. As you can see in this example, it doesn't work. There isn't a single node that contains the range 3.8. So when bringing the array a layer upwards, we have to handle edge cases. 
we have to look at the nodes at the borders. We already saved quite a few lookups. But notice that this effect will be a lot bigger on larger arrays. If you want to compute the minimum in the range containing 1 million values, you will need less than 40 lookups in the tree, instead of the million lookups in the array. So this is really fast. Let's look at the construction of the segment tree. Here again I draw the tree. This time I additionally index the cells with the numbers from 1 to 15. We will store this tree in an array and the indices represent the indices in the array. Notice that the first node gets assigned with the index 1. In most languages arrays start with the index 0, but you can simply keep the element at index 0 uninitialized. Also notice that including this index 0 we have exactly 2 times n nodes, where n is the length of the original array. In this table we can also see two important properties. We can compute the index of the left child node by doubling the current index and the index of the right child node by doubling and adding 1. For instance the child nodes of the node 2 are 2 times 2 which is 4 and 2 times 2 plus 1 which is 5. Or the child nodes of the node 6 are 2 times 6 and 2 times 6 plus 1. And similarly we can compute the parent of a node. The only thing to do is a division by 2. The parent of the node 13 is 13 divided by 2, which is 6. And here is the construction algorithm. The only input parameter is the original array R. Then you store the length of R in N, create a new array with size 2 times N, which we call data, copy R into the second half of data, and then fill the first half of data. We loop backwards over the indices starting at n-1 and going to 1, and in each step we compute the value of index by taking the minimum of the two child nodes, 2 times index and 2 times index plus 1. And here's the update algorithm. The input parameters are the index of the value in the original array and the new value. First we want to know the index in the tree. Because the value of the tree is a leaf node in the tree, we have to add n to the index. Then we can assign the new value to data of, of index. As we saw in the preview before, we have to update all the parent nodes. So as long as the index is bigger than 1, we go to the parent node by dividing with 2 and we compute the node value by taking the minimum of the child nodes. And now to a minimum computation. This one is a little bit harder to understand, but I will show you a detailed example afterwards so that you can visualize it. The idea is the following. We start with the range at the bottom layer of the tree, at the leaf nodes, which are the original array, and then in each step we take the range one layer up, making it smaller and smaller in containing less tree nodes and less tree nodes. When going in layer up, we might have to deal with border nodes. So let's start. The input parameters are left and right. Right is again not included in the range, left is. First we have to compute the indices of the leaf nodes, so we add n to both left and right. Then we set the current minimum to infinity, because we haven't checked any nodes yet. Then we perform a while loop. The while loop iterates as long as left is smaller than right, which means as long as our range has numbers in it, which we haven't processed. In the loop we check the left element. If the index is odd, we have to reconsider it for the minimum. So we update the current minimum by taking the minimum of the old minimum and the left value. And now that we use the left value of the range, we make our range smaller by increasing left. Then we do the same thing on the right side. We check if right is odd, in which case we decrease right by 1 and compute the new minimum. Notice that the order of decreasing and recomputing the minimum is swapped. The reason is the data of right is not actually part of the range. We said at the beginning that right is excluded. Then we take the remaining array one layer up by dividing left and right with 2. And at the end, when the range doesn't contain any elements anymore, we can return the minimum. Let's see this in action. On the right I have the exact same tree as before. We want to compute the minimum in the range 3 to 8. So the input parameters are left equal to 3 and right equal to 8. First we translate these array indices to tree indices by adding 8 to both values. 
This gives us left equal to 11 and right equals to 16. In the tree, these are the following nodes. Then we set the minimum to infinity. Left is smaller than right, meaning we still have unprocessed values in the range. This will be the green marked nodes in the tree. We haven't checked these nodes. First we check if left is odd. It is. This means that the left node of the range, the node 7, is a right child node. Because we can't take this node one layer up, we have to process it right now. So we recompute the minimum, which is now 7, and increase the index left. So left is now 12. And this is our range. Then we check if right is odd. It is not. This means now we can take the range and move it one layer up. We divide left and right by 2, giving us the range from left equals to 6 to right equals to 8. We still have unprocessed values in the range, so again we check if left and right are odd. They are not. So again we can take the array one layer up. There are still unprocessed values in the range. This time left is odd, so we recompute the minimum. It is now 3. Then we increase the index left and we get to the new range 4 to 4. Right is already even, we divide by 2, stop the while loop and return the minimum 3. Notice that in each iteration the interval gets halved. So we have logarithmic steps. In each iteration we only have two ifs, which handle the border cases. These take constant time to process, so the algorithm takes logarithmic time in total. And we accomplish this in only 2 times n storage. In all the examples I used the power of 2 as array length. This was intentional, because this way the original array fits nicely into the leaf nodes of the tree. But what is when n is not the power of 2? One possible solution would be to fill the array with zeros, until the array has a power of 2 length. But this is actually quite inefficient. In the worst case this would lead to a 4 times n storage complexity. But luckily there is a surprising result. This is not necessary. The algorithm works for every n. Let's look at the following example. This is an array with only 6 elements. If we create the tree with 2 times 6 elements and copy the array to the second half of the array, we get this strange shape. But we can do exactly the same thing as before. We fill the parent nodes. The minimum of 6 and 7 is 6. The minimum of 8 and 1 is 1. The minimum of 4 and 3 is 3. The minimum of 1 and 6 is 1. At this moment we can actually stop. Because 1 and 3 are actually part of different layers. While computing the minima, we will reach 1 and 3 at different iteration times, since we transfer the layers from the bottom to the top. So we can leave this node uninitialized, or we can compute it, it doesn't really matter. And now we want to compute the minimum of the range 0 to 5. Left is 0, right is 5. First we compute the three indices by adding 6, so we get 6 and 11, and initialize the minimum with infinity. These are the values in the tree. Left is even, but right is odd, so we decrease right and update the minimum with the right node. So the new minimum is 6. The range is now smaller. We divide left and right by 2 and end up with the range 3 to 5, which are the following nodes. Left is odd, so we update the minimum with 3, and right is odd, so we update the minimum again. Now left and right are equal to 4, because we increased and decreased left and right. We divide and end up with two twos, and the, and the while loop stops. As you can see, everything worked, even if n is not a power of 2. Notice this only works because our minimum function allows it. You will find quite a lot of other segment tree implementations, on YouTube for instance, or on other places, that use a different method of computing the minima. It's in the most cases a recursive function. In most of these implementations, n has to be a power of 2. Otherwise it wouldn't work. So this code is a really efficient and flexible one. Instead of computing the minimum, you can also adjust the algorithms to also compute the maximum of range or the sum of a range. In fact, you can use any binary associative operation you want. For instance, binary XOR or similar stuff. I implemented the segment tree in C++, Java and Python 
You can find links to all the implementations in the description. You can also find links to more information about segment trees. You can do a few more astonishing things with the segment tree, for instance, for instance, updating a complete range of numbers in logarithmic time. So I'll leave links in the description where we can find information about these sort of things. Also check out my tutorial I made about the Fenwick tree. This data structure accomplishes similar stuff as the segment tree. It is a bit more effective, but also a bit more restrictive. Thank you for watching.